What's up, Safe Moon Army? I'm Safe Moon Mark, and I'm here to go over this daunting topic called liquidity. You hear it mentioned everywhere, but what does it mean, and specifically, what does it mean for Safe Moon? That's what we'll be covering, and for any of you who have a solid understanding of how liquidity works in DeFi, you should skip ahead until I go over what liquidity means for Safe Moon specifically. For those of you who remember my first tokenomics video, I explained the transaction process of SafeMoon. If Alice sends Bob $100 in SafeMoon, 90% of that, or $90, is received by Bob, and 10%, or $10, is separated, split in half. 5%, or $5, is redistributed to all SafeMoon holders, and the other 5% is sent to liquidity. But what's liquidity? If an asset or item is considered liquid, it means it can be sold or purchased easily at a fair market value and without hassle. Think gold or cash. An asset that is illiquid will take more work to find a buyer and secure a deal. Real estate or your car would be an example. Liquidity, as the name suggests, is a term used to describe the availability that exists for selling or buying any asset, how likely you are to be able to sell your asset at a fair price. If liquidity is low, it will be more difficult to finalize a transaction, unless you opt to wait a long time or cut into your profits. Sometimes no transaction can be found at all, and the owner of an asset can be left stuck holding the bag until an opportunity presents itself. This is why liquidity is important in any market. An item that is harder to sell is less appealing to anyone who wants to be sure that at the end of the day they'll be able to sell it for their money back. Market makers such as Coinbase, the New York Stock Exchange, or BitMart determine the market of an asset using what's called an order book model where buyers and sellers come together and place their orders for a particular asset in a large list format. Sellers are trying to maximize their profits while buyers are trying to get the best deal possible. Centralized exchanges such as these algorithmically determine the price of an asset based on current buy-sell orders, historical data, and several other factors. With decentralized finance, or DeFi, exchanges are not operated by third parties. They must rely on code to ensure they work properly. PancakeSwap is an example of a decentralized exchange, or DEX, where there is no order book model. Instead, these exchanges rely on liquidity pools to determine the price and availability of assets they list. Liquidity pools are basically the order book of decentralized exchanges. Liquidity pools determine the market, how much an asset is worth, and how easily you can buy or sell it at a fair market value. A liquidity pool is like a wallet, but it instead holds two tokens inside of it. One of these tokens is the token we are creating a market for, in our case it's SafeMoon, but it could very well be a different token like BUSD or any token we want to buy or sell on PancakeSwap. The other token, however, needs to have a market outside of the liquidity pool, meaning the price needs to be stable enough to survive in multiple other markets. Binance token, BNB, is an example of this. BNB has its own centralized exchange, and it is listed on many others. This creates a large and diverse market for it. The price of BNB will stay around the same between all of these markets due to arbitrage, and if you don't know what that word is, the link above goes to my video explaining it in more detail. The value of BNB is not determined by one market. The buys and sells of BNB on Binance will differ from the buys and sells of BNB on Gemini or Crypto.com. This gives BNB a real-world value, so to speak. Now SafeMoon, or any DeFi token on Binance's blockchain, can put itself into a liquidity pool with BNB, using BNB's price to give the coin in question a value. This is done the following way. Let's say I make a new coin and name it Mark's Coin. I create 10,000 Mark's Coin and decide to keep none of it and place all of it inside of a PancakeSwap liquidity pool paired with BNB. I am a small startup with very little funds to get started, so I will put 100 BNB into the liquidity pool with my 10,000 Mark's Coin. The initial price of Mark's Coin from this point on will now be 100 divided by 10,000, or 0.01 BNB. From here, we can use the price of BNB, which at the time of writing is $351, to get our initial value of Mark's Coin at $3.51. This is how tokens that are seemingly worthless still have an initial value to them. The way DEXs calculate price is far more simple than how centralized exchanges do with order books. What PancakeSwap does is use the constant product market maker equation, which is super simple, yet still has a number of benefits. The constant product market maker equation goes as follows, x times y equals k. It can be more intricate than this if you factor in transaction fees, but there's no reason to overcomplicate things for this video. x is the quantity of token 1 in the pool, and y is the quantity of token 2 in the pool. 
The main thing to take away from this function is the fact that the product k is held constant and does not change. Let's see what the k value for Mark's coin is. So we take our 10,000 Mark's coin and we multiply that by the 100 BNB to get an answer of k equals 1 million. Now k cannot change. And this may not seem important, but let's walk through an example of the first transaction that takes place with Mark's coin. Bob wishes to spend 50 BNB on PancakeSwap to receive 5,000 out of my 10,000 Mark's coin, hoping to become our largest whale and own half of the supply right off the bat. If Bob's transaction goes through as he wishes, PancakeSwap would deposit his 50 BNB and withdraw 5,000 Mark's coin from the liquidity pool. This would leave the pool with 5,000 Mark's coin and 150 BNB. Do you see the issue with this? If we multiply these values together, we get an answer of 750,000, which is incorrect. We need K to be constant at 1 million. So, how many Mark's coin will Bob receive? Bob is spending 50 BNB, we know this. So we will update the amount of BNB from 100 to 150. By dividing both sides by 150, we can see that the amount of Mark's coin left in the pool after this transaction needs to be 6,666 and 2 thirds which tells us Bob will only receive 3,333 and one-third Mark's coin instead of the 5,000 he had hoped for. The more BNB Bob tries to put in, the worse of a price he will get back, aka the more slippage he will be forced to pay. If he doubles up and puts in 100 BNB, he will only receive 5,000 Mark's coin, or half of what the coin's actual value is. We can see this behavior if we graph the constant product formula. It results in this curve, and what this curve shows us is that the more BNB Bob offers in relation to the total supply in the pool, the worse of a deal he will receive. This works the same way if Bob was selling his Mark's coin, which is scary. This highlights the two main purposes of liquidity pools, to prevent a crypto's value from plummeting to zero during a sell-off, and to always allow all buyers an opportunity to buy. But this is not sounding like a promising system. How does Bob pay a fair price for his Mark's coin? By having more BNB in the liquidity pool to start. If we instead had put 100,000 BNB into the pool, we would have a K value of 1 billion. Now if Bob wants to spend 50 BNB for Mark's coin, he will get the correct amount of Mark's coin back at a fair price, because his addition of 50 BNB hardly affects the 100,000 BNB that are in the pool and thus does not drastically inflate the ratio of Mark's coin to BNB. In this scenario, one Mark's coin is worth 10 BNB, so Bob paying 50 should net him about 5 Mark's coin. What our math tells us is Bob will receive 4.9975 coins, much closer to what we want. The larger the K value, the constant product of our token's quantities, the more stable the currency is. This is where we can really see the importance of liquidity. Since we had more liquidity in our pool in the second example, Bob was able to get a much better price for his token. Likewise, when Bob sells, he will have the same result. Having enough liquidity is essential for maintaining any DeFi currency, and this is where SafeMoon enters the ring. If you check on BSC Scan, you can see the current amount of SafeMoon and BNB in the liquidity pool. At the time of making this video, we can see that there are 9.5 trillion SafeMoon and 100,737 BNB in the liquidity pool. This gives us a K value of 957 quadrillion. For those of you who have been checking, and for those of you who will start checking from here on, the K value of SafeMoon does not remain constant. It bounces around day to day, but it steadily grows over time. This is because there is extra liquidity being added into the SafeMoon liquidity pool daily, which is not the case for the majority of DeFi tokens. This tells us that the stability of SafeMoon will increase over time, and larger buys and sells will impact the price less and less as time goes on. Before I continue, let's use the current stats about the liquidity pool to calculate PancakeSwap's current price of SafeMoon. To find the price, we need to find the ratio of SafeMoon to BNB that are in the pool. This is as easy as dividing the number of BNB by the number of SafeMoon. This result is the ratio of how many BNB there are to every SafeMoon token in this pool. We can then take this result and multiply it by the price of BNB to get the answer of 00003726, which is exactly correct when I did this math on June 8th. Right now, large sell-offs affect the price drastically, but SafeMoon is still young, and its liquidity pool has more room to grow. The larger the pool gets, the less of an effect large transactions will have on the overall price of SafeMoon. 
Now, before any of you get overly concerned about our intimate correlation with the price of BNB, we are not as reliant on them as you may think. SafeMoon is listed on many centralized exchanges that do not use liquidity pools to determine price, meaning that the pancake swap price cannot stray too far from the other prices or arbitrage actors will even them out for a profit. Once the bridges are built connecting SafeMoon to multiple blockchains instead of living solely on Binance's blockchain, the price of BNB will have zero impact on SafeMoon overall. At this point, you should have a basic understanding of how liquidity pools work and how price is determined on decentralized exchanges, but now I need to take your attention over to the FUD. How SafeMoon uses liquidity is the hottest topic for FUD out there right now. Even once reputable sources are blindly spreading false information, and it's not that the information they present is false, but they use it as an excuse to draw several incorrect conclusions about SafeMoon, and those conclusions spread lots of fear, uncertainty, and doubt where very little is needed. Before I go over any FUD, I will briefly review the source of truth, the blockchain, where data is unchangeable and written in code where there is no misinterpretation. You will see Uniswap mentioned. This is because Binance Smart Chain is a paper copy of Ethereum with a few values changed and a restriction of validator nodes to be 21 selected individuals instead of allowing anyone to become a validator like on Ethereum. And this is why Binance is far more centralized than Ethereum. But regardless of these differences, the process for creating a token on top of either blockchain is exactly the same. The code used to create an Ethereum token will create the exact same token on Binance's blockchain, as this functionality was literally copy and pasted. It goes as far to internally register the term Uniswap as PancakeSwap and Ethereum as BNB when they appear in the code. I won't be going over this long, so let's jump into the transfer function, as this function is called on every buy, sell, or transfer of SafeMoon. Ignore the jargon and focus on these few lines. In the first line, we get the current balance of the SafeMoon smart contract. Why are there funds in here? Because every transaction that occurs, it will store 5% of it in this address until it reaches this descriptively named threshold called num tokens sell to add to liquidity. If the balance of the SafeMoon contract reaches whatever this variable is set to, the swap and liquify function is called, passing in this balance as a parameter. This is the function that adds SafeMoon and BNB into the liquidity pool. How often does this happen? If we scroll up, we can see that num token sell to add to liquidity is defined as being 500 billion. The 10 raised to the 9 at the end there is only to cancel out the 9 decimal places SafeMoon uses. Once there are 500 billion SafeMoon set aside for liquidity, the SafeMoon smart contract automatically splits this balance in half. Half of it, or 250 billion SafeMoon, is sold for BNB. So 250 billion SafeMoon is added to the liquidity pool and the equivalent amount of BNB is taken out. Once we have half of the funds in SafeMoon and the other half in BNB, we call this add liquidity function on the two halves. What this does is add an equal ratio of SafeMoon and BNB to the liquidity pool so the price does not decrease. However, if you recall, this BNB that we were putting back into the liquidity pool we had just sold and taken out from the same pool. So the result of this function being called does slightly lower the price of SafeMoon in the short term by around 1.5%, depending on the ratio of BNB in the pool to the total market cap of SafeMoon. But just know, this daily drop in price can never be greater than 5%. Lots of the current FUD that people are spreading about SafeMoon relies on this fact. Crypto, Medium.com, InvestorPlace.com, several social media accounts, all of these people have lost my respect as viable sources. Again, it's not that their information is incorrect, but they apply that information in incorrect ways and as a result draw incorrect conclusions. Here is all the FUD they have spread about liquidity, condensed into four statements that hopefully everyone can understand. I will go through each one and either disprove it or explain why it is not as detrimental as they wanted to make it seem. I encourage everyone to go over the FUD they presented and make sure I covered all the important details. The links will be in the description. Number one. SafeMoon's liquidity function dumps the price of SafeMoon by an average of 1.5% daily. If this function had never existed, the price would be over 30% higher than where it is right now. 2. The addition of only SafeMoon and not new BNB to the liquidity pool is lopsided and will keep the price of SafeMoon low. 3. The SafeMoon liquidity pool is depleting. And 4. The SafeMoon developers have full access to the liquidity pool. Number 1. The swap and liquify function does lower the price of SafeMoon by an average of 1.5%. This is correct. 
and if you add up all of the times that has happened, over 30% does add up, yes. However, the swap and liquefy function lowers the price of SafeMoon without altering volume, which means at the point of writing this video, we have burned over 30% more coins and gained 30% more coins to date than we would have if this function never existed. In the short term, this does drive the price lower, but as I keep mentioning, lower prices mean more burns for the exact same amount of volume. What this will do will accelerate the rate at which we burn and earn tokens. The articles frequently comment on the price not steadily increasing as promised, but we are three months in, and in five years when we have a chart to zoom out on, these dips will be invisible. This coin takes time, volume, and love to grow. The short term is sacrificed to give us smoother sailing into the long term. If we can accelerate the rate at which we burn coins, eventually supply and demand will be what forces our value upwards. People need to learn to stop watching the price of SafeMoon so closely. Personally, I only look at the daily volume and get either excited or disappointment based on that stat alone. As the price of SafeMoon rises, this liquidity function will be called less and less often due to less coins being transferred in each transaction. As we gain a stronger liquidity pool, this function will become obsolete. When we burn our tokens down low enough, this function will never be called again. Remember, it requires 500 billion SafeMoon to be removed from transactions before it's ever called. 2. I keep hearing the term lopsided liquidity thrown around, especially from many of the FUD social media accounts. What they mean by this is as we demonstrated earlier, when swap and liquify is called, only extra safe moon is put into the liquidity pool because the BNB that is added is not external or new. It came directly from that same pool. But what these FUD actors are saying is when extra safe moon is added to the liquidity pool without BNB, it is exactly like a sell order, putting extra safe moon in the pool, which lowers its ratio to BNB, therefore its price. The difference here is that with a sell order, not only is SafeMoon added, but BNB would be removed. In SafeMoon's case, no BNB is removed, only SafeMoon is added. This results in a behavior that is not commonly seen in liquidity pools. The K value, the stability of SafeMoon, rises every time this function executes. Since it is only SafeMoon being added to the pool, the price does decrease, but as payment toward greater stability in the long term. Even if the price does not directly rise on PancakeSwap, when the price of SafeMoon rises on other exchanges due to rising demand and the burning of the supply, arbitrage will force people to buy SafeMoon on PancakeSwap, which will pump the SafeMoon liquidity pool full of BNB, bringing its price back up to where it would be without this functioning existing in the first place, while still offering better prices and slippage to everyone who takes part. 3. I basically proved this in point 2 but I get angry when I read this online. The liquidity pool is not depleting, only increasing. However, the burning of tokens will eventually catch up and reduce the supply in the liquidity pool over time. But this is not a bad thing by any means. Four, when swap and liquify is called, pay attention to this line of the code. If we check the interface, this line is the to address, implying this is where the liquidity tokens go once this function executes. Liquidity tokens allow whoever owns them to pull their liquidity out of the pool, either in the form of BNB or SafeMoon in our instance. As we see here, the liquidity tokens do go to the owner of this contract, or the developers. They have been incredibly open and honest about this, and all of the movement of these liquidity tokens can be tracked openly by anyone. If you are investing in a new project with anonymous developers with a questionable roadmap, you should be terrified of developers owning liquidity tokens, as they could sell these tokens and effectively rug pull their community. Let me highlight the differences between SafeMoon and a token like this. SafeMoon has public facing developers and has established a legal entity in the UK. They cannot just steal everyone's money without facing legal implications. These developers have grown their brand to almost every single country in the world. If they did this, they would literally have nowhere to hide. Any hope of showing their faces to the public again would be gone. The SafeMoon developers have very reputable backgrounds, working for the Department of Defense and other successful organizations, and as a result have been fully transparent with the entire community about what happens with the liquidity tokens. So far, the SafeMoon team has only locked the liquidity, making it inaccessible to anyone for up to four years. 
the devs locked away $250 million without even blinking, and people are continuing to spread FUD now about the $30 million sitting in the liquidity pool today. If you have a good development team with ambitious, driven goals set on innovation, allowing them access to extra funding from the liquidity pool is not always a bad thing, especially when it's auto-generated the way SafeMoon is. I believe if we let them, instead of losing our cool every time, the devs could use some of the liquidity for some amazing growth. They have also asked the community about using it for liquidity on other exchanges, as well as community charitable projects such as donating to COVID relief in India. If it helps our brand or development of our use cases, at the end of the day, who cares? When the pool gets excessively large, we have seen the devs lock it, not run away with the funds. Even if the worst case happened and they did pull all of the liquidity from PancakeSwap, they would be selling 9.5 trillion SafeMoon, or less than 1% of the total supply. Each of our top three whales own more SafeMoon than this, and thus pose a greater threat to our price. Of course, pulling of the liquidity would be horrible to our price on PancakeSwap, but Arbitrage would still allow these prices on various exchanges to even out at maybe 10-15% to lower than what it was before. I personally do not believe the devs are trying to ruin their brand, image, and lives for a couple million dollars when they have had access to a quarter billion. I think they have far bigger plans in the works, and running away with some pocket change is not on their Innovate the World's digital currency structure roadmap. And to throw one of my favorite John Caroni quotes right back at you guys, governments don't work with rug pulls. If anyone watching this is about to start mindlessly regurgitating FUD in the comments, I would love to ask you to hold off and instead invite you to a live debate held either here, on Discord, or Twitch. If I get anyone interested, I will update all of you on Twitter with more information. Please tag the most bearish of FUD spreaders in this video as I'm ready to take on anyone. Thank you guys for watching this video. Give a thumbs up and subscribe if I help facilitate your understanding of liquidity or at the very least how it pertains to SafeMoon.